All right. Hey, everybody. My name is Jimmy DeGalandre, and I'm here to give you all a presentation on 3JS and the very basics of it. So before I get into that, I want to talk about this thing called WebGL. It's short for Web Graphics Library. It was made by Mozilla in 2011, I believe. Uh, it's a JavaScript API for making 2D and 3D objects that you can interact with. And it's very good, but it can be kind of hard to use because they didn't build a renderer in. So anytime you want to make things in WebGL, you have to make the renderer. So in 2010, actually, this came out before WebGL. Uh, this thing, this, another JavaScript API came out called 3JS, but it uses WebGL. Uh, it was made by Paul Brunt in 2010, and it uses it because it was, it had a renderer built in, and they saw WebGL and they said, hey, we can use this. And so it basically looks the same, um, but you don't have to program a lot of the initial stuff in. And anytime you use 3JS, you require it in a script tag. So you either, you can either just source to the JavaScript file, or you actually write it between closing and opening tags. So what it ends up looking like is a very basic example. You can make geometric shapes, cubes, cones, uh, spheres, whatever. And if you're really good at it, you can do things more like this. Um, there are interactable games. You see you get the uh, X-wing going down the trench. I don't know what the rainbow thing is, but it looks really cool. Uh, so how do we use it? Well, there's a few things you got to start thinking about. You have to think about a scene. You got to think about a render, a camera, mesh, geometry, materials, and light. So what are they? The basic ones are scene, render, and camera. A scene is just the totality of it. It's everything. Whether you have a camera, you've got light, you've got a meshes, whatever, it's all going to be in the scene. The render is the thing that draws it. You don't have to build it because it's not WebGL, but you do need to access it so that it can actually do the drawing. Uh, and then there's the camera, which is what you're looking at. Uh, so you can have things in created in the space, but if the camera's not focused on it, you won't see it. So I don't know why that animated. That was weird. Um, so first, let's go over what a mesh is. A mesh is just an object. Uh, it is a cube. It's a cone, a sphere, whatever. Uh, it's going to take two arguments. You're going to have a geometry, and you're going to have a material. So first, uh, we have geometry. What's that? It's the shape. Whatever shape you want to make, that's the argument you put in. So it could be very basic, cube, sphere. Um, there's a little more complicated ones. Uh, dodecahedron, all of the like Dungeons and Dragons die shape, they're all implemented in they're just properties of 3JS that you can call. And then there's a torus knot. I don't really know when you would use that, but it's there if you do want to use it. Uh, so now we have material. And there's a few different kinds. First is basic, which is pretty basic. Uh, you that's technically 3D, even though it doesn't look it. You don't see like what the depth is. But like if you rotate it, you'll see the shape change, but it won't, it doesn't really look like much. So then we have Lambert, which responds to light, whereas basic does not. Uh, basic you can put this on the, in the camera's view, and if you aren't shining light on it, it'll still show up. But with Lambert, you actually need the light to display it. If you don't have light, but you have the object, even if the camera's looking at it, you won't see it. But that being said, it actually responds to the light, and will, you see parts of it are shinier than others, uh, because that's where the light is hitting it, so it provides shading. Then there's Fong, which is shinier. It's uh, where Lambert is kind of a matted look. Fong reflects the light much better and also needs the light to be able to see it. There's also normal. Normal is similar to basic where it does not need light. Uh, you can see it no matter where you put it, whether there's light shining in or on it or not. However, uh, you can't change the color. It's always going to be this kind of cool, rainbowy looking mix. Um, but it, you can't really alter it. So I've been talking about how things are affected by light. So I want to talk about what kinds of light there are. And there, the two big ones that I saw were the point light and an ambient light. Point light is like you take a flashlight or a spotlight and say, 
hey, there's that thing. I want to point light at it. And depending on how you angle it, it will, the light will hit it differently and will, you will be able to view it slightly differently. Ambient light is kind of like mood lighting of the entire scene. Everything is kind of lit up, but nothing is particularly called attention to. So it seems like I skipped a few sides. I don't know where they went. That's weird. Uh, yeah, that's strange. OK. So I went over that. I um, want to talk about some problems I found with Vue.js. Uh, one thing that I saw was that people, was that it changes enough that if you write something in an old version, an old build of 3.js, and then a new version comes out, you, your old version, the thing, your old code might not work anymore. And so you have to just be aware that something you write, it may no longer function if there are further updates. And which isn't, it's not weird that there are updates, it's just how often they occur. Uh, and then there's this quote, which I thought was kind of funny, which is, it has a relatively aggressive developer community who think that having an uncommented demo of a feature counts as documentation. So it kind of just sounds like people that are really into 3JS are big jerks about it. Uh, so just be aware of that if you're trying to like find out how to render something properly or different methods that are on attached to 3JS, you may not have as much luck as you would like. Uh, so there's a few other things you can use um, if you aren't feeling 3JS, but they're all very similar. Uh, there's Unity and A-Frame. They're both really, really good for VR. Unity, you need to know C Sharp for, so it's not really, it's not written in JavaScript, but it's very helpful for making more dynamic games, for example. Uh, there's a bunch of HTML5 game development frameworks. Um, I made one, I know a few people you, I made a project using Phaser, rather, and I know a few people in for the Stackathon also use Phaser. Uh, there's D3, which is just if you want to take your, any kind of data, if you want to make like a really uh, excellent pie graph, then that's the way to go. Uh, and there's also CSS 3D, which is essentially the only the only deal with that is that you the 3D code you're writing you are writing in a CSS style object. There's nothing particularly nuanced about that. Uh, if you want to find some more information, I put some links there. So feel free to check it out. All right, thank you. <laughs>